We get here, and today I'm bringing you the Smith & Wesson Model 629. This is a stainless steel version of Smith & Wesson's Model 29, the famous gun that Clint East would use in all the Dirty Harry movies. This just happens to be all stainless, um, and this particular model happens to have a wood grip, but it is removable, and you could put many other different kinds of grips on it. This revolver, we'll go over the quick functions of this. It's very simple to use this revolver, and this is pretty standard, like all revolvers are definitely like Smith revolvers. Here's your cylinder release, you're going to push this forward. You can rock your cylinder out, you can verify that the gun's empty. There's your ejector right there to eject your spent cases. Close our cylinder. You have your double action trigger pull, and then you have that sweet single action trigger pull. And that's it right there, that's all your controls in this firearm. Also, some minor controls on here, and this can be changed out, are these sights right there. You can see there is your windage adjustment right there, your left and right, and there is your elevation sight right there. And as you can see, your front sight has a little pin in it, and you can replace that front sight too, but these are stock Smith & Wesson sights, and I like them a lot. Just a quick note, you'll notice this little gap up here, and maybe the Smith aficionados can help me out there. So let's go over this being a 629-3, what's special about this gun. First, it has the full underlug, and I like full underlugs on re big revolvers like this. It adds weight to them. That's all it's going to do is, <clears throat> as you can see, there's your ejection rod. A lot of revolvers, you know, will have the underlug will stop right there. This one goes the length of the barrel, and that is just added steel there, and that get, makes the gun heavier. And but for 44 Magnum, it's good because it tames the recoil. And as you folks know, if you watch my 686 video, that gun also has a full under lug and it definitely helps soak up recoil. I also like my personal preference, I like the look of a full under lug. I'm not crazy about where it's cut off and then it comes down. I think this is a better looking gun, but just my two cents. But it makes it a little more shootable, but also harder to carry since it's heavier. The other interesting note about this revolver, since it's a 29 3. It's got no lock. That's definitely pretty cool. Does a lock affect performance? No. Do I lock, like seeing you know the lock in there, the swirly thing? Not my favorite thing, and I know the lawyers have put it on. It, it's not required by law, but it's a pain in the butt. The other nice thing that's pretty cool, you can see the hammer. The hammer's got the spur on it, so it does not have the transfer bar, so that's pretty neat too. So this gun is, you know, probably has a little more collector uh, value to it than some of the newer ones. Nothing wrong with the new ones and I have a new a new one and I'm planning to buy more. So I can't do a review on the 44 Magnum Smith & Wesson revolver without bringing the name of Elmer Keith in. So if memory recalls this 44 Magnum and this revolver came around to being in 1955 if I can remember correctly. And basically, Elmer Keith had the 44 Special, which had been around for, you know, I think like 1904, somebody can correct me, or late 19, 1890s. Elmer Keith was experimenting with the 44 Special and basically loading them up to very high pressures and realized that he got past, you know, the pressure curve and too much power that, you know, those old 44 Special revolvers could take and that they were blowing up in his hands. and you know, blowing up in vices and all sorts of stuff, and it was getting dangerous. So, hence came the 44 Magnum cartridge, where he made, he beefed up the cartridge a little bit with Remington's help, and he made it a little longer. So, 44 Magnum could not be chambered in a 44 Special revolver. And one of the things Elmer Keith loved so much about the 44 Magnum revolver is how versatile it was. You know, you could put everything in it from a 44 Special, you know, that was loaded around a 45 ACP, maybe 350 pounds of muzzle energy, all the way to a super hot 44 Magnum on the other end of the spectrum, that, you know, that was had a thousand pounds of muzzle energy that was coming out of this revolver. So you, you could basically take something and get three times the amount of energy out of it safely out of the same revolver shooting the same projectiles so it was very versatile so you know you can go all the way down to the low end to shoot 180 grain projectiles then shoot you know 200 grain projectile then shoot two i think they make two tens two forties which is a standard one when i reload uh, 90 percent of my loadings i'll just stick with 240s because this is my third 44th mag in my collection and try to just keep it standard and not get crazy i just load Two, four, 240 grain jacket on hollow points. I do have one batch of 300 grains loaded up 
and I have one batch of 270s that I haven't loaded yet, but we'll get on to that later. So that is one wonderful thing about this revolver. It's also kind of a drawback. It, it, it frustrates me to see 44 Special. 44 Special is, is very is sparse. There's not a lot of people selling it. You can't buy it in big box stores. You have to go to smaller mom and pop stores to buy the stuff for, for the most part. And 44 Special is more expensive than 44 Magnum, which is really annoying to me and frustrates me. Um, I hand load. I have both two reloading videos out, one on reloading 44 mag and another on reloading 44 special right down. You obviously way down load them and I'm just loading 200 grain um, lead, lead projectiles out of them, which, which are, which we're shooting on this video, which are quite, quite nice and quite lovely. And out of a big revolver like this, just turns you into a pussycat and very easy to shoot, you know, very easy to teach somebody that's not familiar with guns, how to shoot a big revolver or a revolver in general and something that you know, minimizes the chance of injury, you know, to your wrist, to, you know, getting hit in your forehead with recoil or, you know, just getting, uh, developing a nasty flinch. So Elmer Keith said how this is one of the most versatile cartridges ever made or and revolver ever made. And he has a good point. Um, I'm not going to agree or disagree with him, but it's definitely a good point. Um, I like a 357 maybe a little bit better for the only reason that you can buy 38 specials pretty cheaply in, in the big box stores and they're readily available everywhere unlike 44 special and I think that's the big plus of 38 special over 44 special and that, that would be the drawback on this revolver but let's talk about Smith & Wesson revolvers and the build quality of this um, I love Smith & Wesson revolvers. They are definitely have a soft spot in my heart for these. I love the fit and finish of them. It's definitely very high. And as you know, I also own a Ruger Super a Red Hawk in 44 mag. That is a seven and a half inch barrel. That's a wonderful revolver. But the fit and finish of this is a little finer. The trigger is a little bit better. And it's just slicker. When you handle it, you feel it. You feel the edges of it. It's just a little smoother. It's just a little more finely polished. and. Uh, it, it's definitely cool, and I think that this gun has a, has a very strong cool factor about it. It just looks cool. It looks like a big bore revolver, and you can see the big hole at the end of it, and, and that you know these big cylinders right here, just those, those big holes. And it's definitely cool, and it's definitely well made. The other nice thing about these revolvers is you have access to Smith & Wesson's Performance Center. And I bought this used, and the funny thing was is some gun stores are particular about dry firing guns. So I didn't ask to dry fire, but I did, I did, you know, check. I checked for push off with the hammer. I checked the cylinder and all that before I bought this gun. And when I got it home, I dry fired it, and I realized that this realized very quickly that this gun had a trigger job, and it has a wonderful trigger trigger job. And out of all my guns, except for my 1911, this has the best trigger on it I've ever I, out of all my firearms. And the double action is sweet, and the single action is really light and really crisp. And it is um, I've already had a friend shoot this, and they, they the single action trigger pull on this scared them they were like it's way too powerful of a gun and having way too light of a trigger but i'm like i love it and it helps me hit at long distances and i was shooting a 12 inch plate earlier at about 60 yards and getting about a 50 percent hit ratio on it with 44 mags out of this which i was really impressed at and the only reason i can do that is because of that sweet single action pull so we'll go ahead and we'll shoot one of these three litters for you folks See, that made pretty short work of it. A little double action here. Go for a single. And I've spent years reading about this revolver and originally when I bought my 686 probably five or six years ago I was comparing it to one of these the same exact gun actually uh, but I think it was a dash six I was looking at it had the lock and the transfer bar and all that and I'm glad I bought my 686 because that's a little easier to carry um, also I think that has a couple more uses than the 
44 mag. One, it carries an extra round, so it carries seven shots instead of six shots. The other thing is with 357, 125 grain jacket or hollow points or a 38 special plus P, it makes an excellent home defense gun. But that's a point I wanted to cover for this. I don't think this is a bad choice for home defense or personal defense. It's just a little too big. It's overkill. Can you load it with 44 specials or a hot 44 special, the 240 grain jacketed bullet? Yeah, you can, but you're still limited to six rounds and it's a big, heavy gun. And it's more than you need. You can you can shoot a 357 with 125s and that's a, that's a better choice. Um, it's smaller. It's going to be easier to shoot quicker with follow-up shots. Not to say that some people can't shoot this with 44 mag quickly and effectively, but I watched a Paul Harrell video and he shot a 44 mag, a Smith, I think with a four inch barrel. He shot it pretty well. He shot the knockdown plate and I was pretty impressed. But I guarantee you those are not strong 44 mag loads. Those are probably somewhere in, you know, in the, you know, seven, eight hundred pounds of muzzle energy, not a thousand. And that's mostly of, you know, what I shoot out of this gun. So I don't think this is a great choice. One, if you have 44 mags, it's overkill. It's more power than you need. Uh, your follow-up shots are going to be slow. This thing recoils. It makes a lot of muzzle blast. It makes a big bang. And it, it's, it's big. It's difficult to carry. I think this is a much better choice if you live in a rural environment. If you live out in the country and you need defense against bears, against moose, against elk, against mountain lions, this is an optimal choice. Um, if you're in a rural environment and you're a hiker, if you're a backpacker, if you're a camper, this is an optimal choice. Excellent choice. Ammo can be had everywhere for these things. 44 mag ammo. Then you, you have good defense against two-legged predators and excellent defense against four-legged predators. So that is where this gun falls into place. So if you're somebody that just wants a revolver and maybe you have a 9mm, maybe you don't have a gun at all, and you're looking for another gun for self-defense and you're in a more of a suburban, urban area, this is not a great choice for that. Not a bad choice, but not a great choice. Hunting. This is an excellent hunting revolver with the six and a half inch barrel and the trigger job. I literally can line this gun up and shoot this accurately. Double action, as you can see from my videos, I'm, I'm getting better. Um, I'm still not the master double action revolver. It definitely intrigues me to become much better with it, but I am not there yet. But I am working on it. I'm not no Hickok 45 and I'm no Paul Harrell, but those, I am envious of these guys. Or no Jerry Mickluck, but I'm definitely envious. And those guys are amazing with double action, you know, firing a, a revolver like this quickly and, 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 you know, and effectively and getting hits on target. Also, this gun's a lot of fun at the range, too. It's definitely cool, it's definitely fun. And you can get light 44 mags for this. You can get 44 specials and, and make this gun really fun fun at the range. You can also put, you know, full bore 44 mags at this. And this is a handful with full bore 44 mags. And don't kid yourself, it, it is heavy duty. Other things you could do to tame the gun a little bit more is they do make this gun, I believe, with an 8 and 3 8 inch barrel, which would tame the recoil more. And they also make these ported. And that way it definitely will take away more recoil of these firearms when you make them heavier and put ports in them also the different configurations smith and wesson sells in this go to the website look i mean literally throughout the years there's got to be two or three hundred uh, incarcerations of these 629s and model 29s all the way from two inch barrels all the way from the eight three eighth inch barrels you know to weighted barrels to you know the hunter version with rails on them and now I see that they're making an, a five-shot L-frame with the 44 mag. That's a good carry gun, um, especially in the woods. Um, the Combat Magnum. They're also, and this is the, but this is their common classic N-frame, and this one just has a trigger job in it. I'm not sure if the trigger job came from the factory. It could have come from aftermarket, but there's plenty of people that do wonderful trigger jobs on Smith and Wesson revolvers, and this is a wonderful trigger job on this revolver right here the same gun as my 686 the only difference is just a little bigger um, the barrels are just a half inch longer and the frame is bigger this is an end frame revolver too so you have j frames k frames l frames n frames and then the x frame so this is the second largest frame that smith and wesson makes the biggest one being the x frame which is the 460 and the 500 magnums um, the preferred way i would carry a revolver like this would I would get like a Cody a, a Galco Kodiak rig or you know and I would carry it along my chest like this that you kind of need to be in an open carry state or a state where you can walk around in the woods that's really what that kind of a rig is for um, 
you can get a waist rig right there just a regular hip holster for outside the belt carry you can't you're not going to carry this inside your belt but, you know make sure you have a good belt and you know get some speed loaders on the other side to try to balance the weight out a little bit that'll definitely help you out i've carried my ruger like that all day it's doable it's not it's not impossible with a gun of this size uh but the best way to carry a revolver like this is a shoulder holster you know get something a good sh you know galco or bianca bianchi you know x holster and just carry it underneath your you know your weak arm that way you can draw it and you know you're ready to rock and the weight of the revolver is being spread up on your shoulders and that that's the easiest way i found myself to carry you know these large frame revolvers you know for for, a, for extended periods of time and then also you can get you know put speed loaders under this other armor on your belt so let's go ahead and we're gonna we got a cylinder here full of 44 special and we're go ahead we're much closer to the target now i would say this is 10 yards 30 feet and we're gonna go ahead and empty the cylinder double action only all six rounds um because i've definitely proven i'm not the best double action uh, handgun shooter and uh, we'll see how we do here we'll, but my goal is to connect all six onto the steel plate without missing at this distance so we'll take our time we'll do it we'll do it try to tour correctly That wasn't so bad. The other thing that makes revolvers absolutely wonderful if you are a hand loader or if you get into hand loading. Um, watch my videos if you're looking to get into it or if you want to learn more from it. The hand loading is wonderful. And, and a gun like this, it just it makes this gun a lot more fun that I'm in my garage and I've already created all sorts of rounds just for this revolver. And I already had some that I had created for my Henry and my Ruger um, that I just used for this. But that really opens up this gun, and that takes away the problem of 44 specials costing millions of dollars. Is that you're allowed, you're able to, you know, I got a box of 100 rounds of uh, Hunter's 200 grain bullets, just lead bullets, and they were, they were like $15. And then I had the 44 special brass, I've slowly saved up, but you can get 44 special brass cheap. I can get Starline 100 uh, cases of 44 special for 20 bucks. So, you know, you're, you have access if you, if you load, and that's where you can really save money are loading specials. So I bought this gun um, maybe to do some future hunting with it. I bought it definitely for a woods protection gun when I go hiking in the woods. I spend a lot of time up in New England and in Maine and a little time in New Hampshire, a lot of time in Vermont, and this will definitely be carried along with me soon once I get a good shoulder holster for it in the woods, and we'll put some 240 grand uh, jacket and hollow points in there, and this will be my protection along with my 686, and it will serve excellently for that. I also bought it for a fun range gun. Too. So folks, I got my top 10 list right here, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rate this gun in all my categories I have up here so the first thing we're going to rate is the trigger and this is all basically a 0 out of 10 scale and 10 being absolutely perfect and 0 being worthless absolutely no value and then so on and so forth in between so for a trigger we're gonna give this gun a 9 um, a 9 is pretty good um, you know 90% um, obviously the Double action is beautiful. This gun has a trigger job, and the single action can't be. Only reason I didn't give it a 10, I'm guessing a 10 is left. I'm going to reserve that for some awesome 1911, maybe, um, that I haven't even yet fired, but that's what that's for. All right. So, second category, we'll do concealability. Concealability, I gave a 6 on this, and the only reason I gave it a 6 because it is long, and this thing is huge and takes up a lot of space. These guns do carry, these large frame revolvers, they carry nicely on your arm like that. I'm a bigger guy. A smaller guy might have a problem with this. But I can literally throw this on a shoulder holster, throw my sweatshirt on top, or a button-down jacket, zip-down jacket, and I can carry this all day, no problem. This, so this is concealable. It's not my first choice, but I could even carry this in an urban environment if I wanted to. Um, not planning on it, but I could. But in the woods, it's great. So this is concealable, so I gave it a 6 out of 10. Self-protection, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. This isn't your best choice. 44 mag is too powerful. It, your follow-up shots are too slow, unless you get the lighter loads. 44 special, 
I would say kind of why bother? Is it better than nothing? Absolutely. But you can get a 1911 that'll hold eight plus one shots of 44 ACP, 45 ACP that have the same power as only six of this. Or also you can get these new, uh, like an F the FNX that'll hold 15 rounds of 45 ACP. So this is not your best self-protection gun, but it's, it's a lot better than nothing. It will work. So it's got a four out of 10. Investment value. I'll give this particular gun six and a half maybe i should have given it a seven but i gave it a six and a half this gun since it's all steel and is not polymer this gun is a good investment there's a lot of these out there though so not as many as you know glocks or something like that but or as a j frame but there's a good amount of these up there these aren't rare and these are in most gun stores that have you know good stuff i mean these are pricey though i mean these are basically they're nine hundred dollars uh with plus tax um, and they're expensive to shoot. So it, these represent a good value because they're expensive to machine and they, they do have a, a good cool factor. So these will appreciate over time. You're not gonna lose your money buying with these if you take care of it. So let's see, that's the fifth category is the cool factor. This gets an eight and a half on the cool factor. To me, this thing is ultra cool. Um, it, it's, it's just, it's got a, it's big bore. It's got a, you know, 44 mag. It, it, it looks cool. The uh, proportion to this, uh, you really can't get a revolver to look better than this. This is about as cool as a gun can look in my two cents. It's cool. And I, I can't make this gun look better. I don't know what I would do to it. Uh, or, or the Smith 44 mags. They, they are cool. So it gets an 8.5 out of 10. Versatility. <clears throat> I'm going to give this gun an 8 out of 10 on versatility. Versatility is... You know is is great with this gun put 40 as i talked earlier put 44 specials you can teach you know a, a smaller stature person a kid your girlfriend somebody in experience with firearms that's recoil very recoil sensitive and then you can you could go elk hunting with this you know you can put some big 44 mags in this and you could bring down a large animal uh with this and you can shoot everything in between this and this gun's not going to hiccup next go to war uh, as one of um, Nut and Fit Coin, one of Nut and Fancy's phrases, a G GTW. You go to war, I'm going to give this a three, a 3 out of 10, uh, basically because it's better than nothing. But 44 mag and 44 special ammo, are not, you're not going to find those really readily available. The gun's heavy, the ammo's extremely heavy. You do not want to carry this for with a lot of ammo. 100 rounds of ammo for this gun is really heavy, and it takes up a lot of space. And it's slower to reload unless you get good with speed loaders. But that's basically the reason why your follow-up shots are slower. Ammo's big and heavy. It's more power than you need. So I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10 of your out of go to war. Bang for your buck value. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Um, it's, it's super cool. It's, it's a great gun to shoot. But they are expensive. For a first time, uh, if this was your first gun that you bought and you were on some sort of a budget like a lot of us are and you go and buy a gun it's going to be expensive to shoot you're going to pro lay out almost a thousand dollars for this thing and then hundreds of dollars for ammo and you're not going to be able to shoot it much it's going to get expensive quick but it is cool um so i'm going to give it a five out of ten for bang for the buck shootability it's a six for kind of what we talked about with versatility earlier this gun's pretty shootable it's a little difficult to really work that double action with real hot 44 mags in it, but very doable. This is, um, it's, it's, it's shootable, not super shootable. It's not a nine millimeter, you know, like a Beretta 92 or a SIG 226 or a Glock that's, I would say, super shootable or, you know, even a 22 pistol or revolver. If this was a 22, it'd be a, probably a 10, be very shootable. This is not quite super shootable, but it's good. Firepower, I'm going to give firepower a five out of 10. It, some people might want to think more, you know, why didn't I give it more? It's a 44 mag. Only reason is it holds six rounds. Um, you could get, you know, you can get guns now that hold a lot more rounds than this that are more powerful or that are small for the size that are smaller than this that'll still carry six rounds. You can get this with a two inch barrel that would, you know, that has a little more firepower and it's a little, it's a little smaller, a little harder to make that gun a little harder to shoot. But you can compare this against, let's say a Glock 20. Glock 20 holds 15 plus one rounds of 10 millimeter. Granted, 44 mag crushes 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter still no slouching. 
15 rounds is a lot more. Um, or else you could compare this up to like a 460 load of 454 casuals. You got five rounds of, of a round that's almost it's at least 50% more powerful than this, or put to four power, full six, four sixties in there. It's a much more powerful revolver than this, and you're only down one round. So the firepower is a five. Maybe I, you could give it a six out of 10. So my overall score to this gun is a 61. Maybe you go up to 63, 64, 65 out of 100. So that's basically it. So one last thing I'd like to touch on is, this is endless on the internet and on, especially on forums. Um, I read this all the time, our Ruger, for Smith & Wesson. I'm going to make a video solely comparing my Super Red Hawk versus Smith & Wesson Model 29 or 629. People talk about how this is a weak revolver and it's not as strong as Ruger's. Yada, 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 yada. All right, let's just go with that. Let's see, I don't disagree with that. This is still a 44 Magnum revolver and anybody that says this is a weak revolver has no idea what they're talking about. Has probably never ever shot a 44 Mag before or maybe only shot their buddies once and they just they're thinking about buying a ruger so this gun can still stay, safely shoot 1400 foot per second 1500 foot per second 44 mag that will give you a thousand pounds of energy at the muscle that is factory loaded 44 mag ammunition winchester white box from walmart clocks out of this thing at 1470 feet per second that's right around a thousand pounds of muzzle energy one thing is smith and wesson did design this gun to shoot 240 grain bullets so if you were shooting wanted to shoot a 300 grain bullet or 320 grain bullet or 340s that's not your best bet and another thing that's made this gun the famous add famous to debate to these firearms and their strength is Buffalo Boars 340 grain plus P plus 44 mag. Those things I think are have 1500 pounds of muzzle energy and they they have a, a warning underneath them when Buffalo Boar sells them that they're only supposed to be used in Colt Anacondas, Ruger firearms, uh, Thompson centers, yada yada. Do not use in Smith and Western revolvers. Okay, that's fine. Um, you, you, got, you got this revolver beat there, but only reason you need to shoot something that big is if you're hunting very large animals and I'm talking a thousand pounds plus this revolver is probably solid for for going after a thousand pound elk or a 1200 pound moose you know with 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 a good hard cast bullet in it um, you're not gonna have a problem taking that animal down if you want to hunt something bigger get a Ruger but for all practical purposes it doesn't matter. It's just going to kick more. This gun, is for me, I can shoot this gun easier than my Ruger Super Red Hawk. My Ruger Super Red Hawk with no gloves on cuts my finger, and it's a heavier revolver. This gun is a nicer gun to shoot. I think that that debate is so overblown and so over-exaggerated that th this is a very powerful firearm and has a lot of heavy recoil with big 44 mag loads. And a Ruger Super Red Hawk, yes, you can shoot those things with hotter ammo and make a bigger bang. But unless you're hunting the largest animal, it does not matter. This gun is plenty powerful and you don't need any more power to blow up jugs to, to, to shoot at the range or to impress your friends with. Uh, if that's what you're about, hey, I, I'm not going to get too hung up over it. But I own them both. I'm happy to own them both. I don't plan on selling either one. If I do go hunting out in the woods and I think I'm going to shoot something over a thousand pounds, I'll bring the Red Hawk. But the odds of me doing that, even in my lifetime, are slim. I think this would this is pretty much fine for everybody. Um, and that's my bottom line about that, addressing that this gun is or might not be as strong as other 44 mags out there. It is still a very strong, powerful revolver. And if you're one of the ones that bags in these things online, I bet you're one of the ones that has never shot one and has definitely never owned one of these things and really probably has no idea what you're talking about. I'm going to add one last thing. Before you buy one of these, if you don't own a, a full-size 357 Magnum revolver yet, buy a 357 first. Do not go and buy a 44 mag. Get the 357, then buy your 44 mag that is the proper way that's the way i did it i almost bought this first i bought my 686 i'm glad i did it like that it, that's just the right thing to do you just 
work your way up so you don't develop a nasty flinch and also get yourself used to spending money and reloading for that extra cost of a 44 mag but folks if you like this video please feel free to give me a thumbs up if you have any questions post them below and I'll try to get back to them as quickly as I can and also keep an eye out for my review coming of the Ruger Super Red Hawk versus Smith and Wesson model 629 that'll be a good one because I'm going to put a little different spin on it for you folks but folks thanks for watching